Let's do some quick review here and we'll start out with evaporator temperatures. Now it doesn't matter what system you're working with, the evaporator is designed to fill up with just enough refrigerant to absorb the amount of heat it needs to absorb to maintain the proper temperature in the box or the house or the freezer or, or cooler, whatever you're working on. And there are some design considerations that the evaporator must fall within to do that. So we're going to take a look at some the, the normal evaporator, which is able to absorb all of the heat in the box, and it has just enough refrigerant, not too much or not too little, to do so. But what happens when you have a low evaporator temperature? Well, then you get a, that's caused by um, not enough refrigerant in the system, which gives you low pressure or a low load, which means there's not enough heat to boil off that refrigerant. Now, the high evaporator temperature is, is because there's too much refrigerant or the system is overcharged, or a high heat load, which causes the refrigerant to boil off too rapidly. A lot of our commercial refrigeration systems are not designed to put uh, 70 degree produce into a prep table to cool it down and that would be an example of high load situation but we'll look at that here in just a bit. Superheat. Normal superheat indicates that the evaporator is operating properly and it is operating to its fullest design capacity and that the refrigerant that's leaving the coil is totally vaporized. It is all vapor so that we don't send liquid back to the compressor. Now low superheat, that's called flooding, is when the re all the refrigerant isn't turned into vapor in the evaporator. And that either means that you have an overfeeding metering device or you have a low load condition. Now high superheat, heat, that's called starving the evaporator of refrigerant. Um, the refrigerant is vaporized and turned to vapor way too early in the evaporator coil and then you get very poor cooling cooling inside of the device. Now that means if you have high superheat you have a metering device that is under feeding which would be a bad TXV or a maybe a plugged um, cap tube or someone has loaded like we mentioned earlier higher temperature product into the box than what the box was designed to hold and that's going to give you high superheat as well. This is really important here on superheating. Um, that superheat is only accurate when the temperature is operating within five degrees of its design conditions. I used to work for an air conditioning company that would install new air conditioning systems and send technicians out to fire off the systems. Well it'd be in Florida, it would be 95 degrees outside with super high humidity. It would be 95 degrees inside with high humidity. And they would want those systems fired up and tested uh, within about an hour. Well, with 95 degree indoor air temperature, that falls outside of the design conditions of the manufacturer. So that's one thing you need to uh, take into consideration, um, the design conditions. So if you have a a cooler that is brand new and you're doing a startup on it, well the in interior of that cooler is at ambient air temperature. It could be 80 degrees in that cooler and its design conditions may be between um, 35 and 40 degrees. So if you're not within 5 degrees Fahrenheit of the design conditions, uh, superheat goes right out the window. Now normal superheat for this chapter varies depending on whether it's an air conditioner, refrigeration, uh, refrigerators, or freezers. That's on our little cheat sheet that you can download. Um, but for this chapter, normal superheat is between 5 and 20 degrees. Now for our purposes, low superheat is below 5 degrees Fahrenheit and high superheat is above 20.